here, as the ice starts to dissipate and melt away, the water temperatures in the shell will start to warm up. And somewhere along the line with late, late ice, photosynthesis starts. It's when the weeds start to grow. Water temperature is becoming warm now. Photosynthesis has got the weeds growing. The ice is off the lake. You got a lot of oxygen now in the shallow waters. Shallow waters, back of the bays on most of these lakes is a good location. Anything shallow with an indentation with sand or silt. Why sand? Sand heats up the quickest, same as silt. That's where these sunfish are going to go to spawn. With the spring location comes the spawning. Sunfish move into the shallows to spawn. The female will lay her eggs, the male will fertilize it. But before she does that, she's going to find an area with soft sand or silt and she's going to roust up the area. She's making a bunch of little round circles, looks like a honeycomb effect. And she picks one of those to lay her eggs. After the eggs are fertilized, she'll stay there and guard them. Even after the eggs hatch, she'll stick around and guard them. That is location, springtime sunfish, anywhere from two feet of water to four feet of water. Now's the perfect time for the people who can't afford a boat or don't have a boat to go fishing from shore. And there's a lot of good shore fishing to be had. So let's talk equipment next. Equipment's pretty easy for rod as far as rod selection goes. I like a limber rod, light ultralights, six foot to six foot six. I sort of shy away from the small ultralights, just takes too long to play the fish. Light line breaks, got too many sunfish with hooks in their mouth. I like to get them in, get them released unharmed, or put them in the pail. So any rod, light, ultralight, six foot, six foot six works perfect for us. Fishing from ashore or from the boat. Reels, same scenario as earlier. I like a small ultralight reel, anything that'll hold 50 to 100 yards of line. Two pound test, three pound test, four pound test. Some people use six pound test in the spring. You know what? I'm still sticking with a three pound test. It's got the right subtlety, it's got the strength, and it's got the suppleness that we look. Bait, so much to choose from springtime. Waxworms, spikes, mousies from the winter, they all still work real good. Angleworms work fantastic now. So do night crawlers and baby leeches. Again, just like in wintertime, have a, a little bit of everything. Mix it up. One person starts with one, another person tries something else until you establish a pattern. That's what you establish is a pattern. Everybody's got something going catching fish. Now that we covered bait, let's talk about lures. That's what I tip my lures with is bait. I like baby leeches. They're hardy. They stay on long. You catch many fish on it. Waxworms work fantastic too. Tip it with a waxworm. Now, early in the season, if you have any kind of cold front conditions, use a smaller lure. But there's plenty of lures out there. I like to tip them with bait, like I said. Custom jigs and spins. There's dozens and dozens and dozens of companies that have good lure selection out there. And when all else fails, a plain hook. But here's the key. We use a red hook. Not a flashy brass one, not a flashy silver one. Sometimes they work good. But we have found out that red blends into the water column much, much better. Tip that with a worm or something, and you're in good luck. Go ahead and set the hook. Oh, yeah. There we go, that's a nice sunny, woo! All right, it's early springtime here. The water's finally starting to warm up a little bit, but all the fish, they moved into shallow water here to stay warm while the temperatures are still really cold out in the deep. It's starting to warm up here by the shallows. So they're coming in here and we found a nice little hole here. You can actually see in the water, there's a bunch of little holes and actually you probably can even see some of the fish that are in there. So it's almost like cheating here to some extent because we can see them right there. So, but what we're doing is we're going back to basics. All I got here today that we're fishing with is a simple bobber, sinker, hook, and then a worm. Very basic here. We're going to see what kind of action we can get. All right, we got a little bit of action here, and there we go. Another nice big one. Oh, man. All right, this one, this is a beauty. This is what we're after here. Beautiful coloring. And again, bobber action. Let's go ahead and get this guy back in too. Oh, here we go. Oh yeah, here we go. Oh, oh I seen him come flying in. <laughs> oh, it's another nice one. Another beautiful bluegill. I think we found the hot spot here, folks. This guy, 
I saw him come flying in like a bullet. Uh, I started adjusting my line a little bit because I saw that something bopped it earlier and then nothing happened. So I was going to check to see my line and I must have just had a little bit enough on there or maybe just the action it got him mad because he just came flying in and smoked it like a bullet. It was a lot of fun to see. We'll wind up the slack here and set the hook. There we go. That's a nice one. Beauty. Another nice bluegill. We just see him floating around in there. It's like shooting fish in a barrel almost. <laughs> so yeah, we we found a nice little hot spot. This is another nice bluegill. Great action. Let's keep going here. Okay, we got him running. Let's here we go. There we go. Look at that guy. All right, here we go. We'll get him in. There we go, another beautiful fish. Great looking bluegill here. We'll get him back. There we go. There we go, fish on. Oh yeah, another nice bluegill. Another nice bluegill. Beautiful fish. All right, there we go. Another beautiful, beautiful bluegill. Tighten the line up. Let him take it. Oh, we got one going on my other one. Oh, this one, this one's a bass. Here. I know, it's a nice bluegill. That's what it is. All right. This one, this has to be the trophy of the day. Another beautiful bluegill here. This one hit a lot harder. I almost thought I had a bass on for a minute since we've been tying into either bass or bluegill, but let's get this one in. He's aggressive. <laughs> Tighten the line up. Commit, commit, commit. It's being a little funny about it. You want to see him take it harder than that. Let's go ahead and there we go. We got him. Oh yeah. Another nice bluegill. There we go. Another nice bluegill. Actually one of the smaller ones compared to what we've been catching here, but another beautiful bluegill. All right. He's taking it and boom. Oh yeah. Another beautiful bluegill here. Oh. Beautiful. <laughs> they just keep getting bigger and bigger. I can't believe it. Oh, this one is a monster. There we go. Hooked right through the snout. It comes off nice and easy. Man, this is a beautiful bluegill, folks. Easily a, a pound fish. This thing's it's a heavy for a bluegill. At least 12 inches, if not more. These are the trophies that we are looking for. A bluegill like this, you gotta love something like that. Come on, bud. All right, we're stuck up in the weeds here. Just trying to get him to pull it out. There we go. Nice little sunny. Nice little sunny. All right, not a bad little sunny there to start the day. So we're fishing in a little pocket here in a little weed bed. I just tossed it into one of the pockets. Um, Steve's fishing with a, a lure wax worm setup. I'm just going with the basic hook and worm. And so far we got this little guy. We're going to toss him back though, but not a bad start to our day. There we go. <laughs> this one's got a little bit of shoulders to it. And he's a little bit stuck. There we go. Here we go. Oh, that's a nice one. Yes. Not a bad sunny. Not a bad sunny. 
Beautiful. Look at that. Not a bad sunfish. No, that's one thing. Right after ice out, going after panfish right from shore. Travis showed that to you. Right from shore, those big, beautiful sunfish. That one was definitely a trophy. But if you can't access good pan fishing from shore, next thing is get out there with the boat. And that's what we got going on right now. We're out here with the boat. Look at that beautiful sunfish. Yep. All right, here we go. Oh. This feels bigger than a sunfish, but maybe the up. Oh, okay, I think it's just because we're copping the weeds. There we go. Now he's starting to come in nicely. Coming flying in. He wants to be caught. And now we're stuck in the weeds again. There we go. Oh, yeah, it looks like a good sunfish. Oh, yeah. There we go. Oh yeah, real nice sunny. Nice, he's thick. So just doing it with the bobber. We got a worm on that one, so he hit that one pretty good. Got tied up in the weeds there. That's the one thing you have to fight about and be patient uh, when you're fishing in the bull rush here is that sometimes they'll get caught up in the weeds. You just gotta make sure that you're patient. Let them kind of work them, their way out of the weeds there. All right, let them try taking it a little bit more. I see a few little easy bumps in it. There we go. Yeah, that was quick. I just tossed it out there. Must have threw it right on top of his head. Let's take a look here. Ah, now he's tied up in the weeds. Give him a second to fight himself out of there. Come on. I see him. He's good and buried in there. See if I can't work them out. There we go. Another nice one. Ugh. There we go. There we go. That's another nice one right here. We'll keep that one. All right. You know, one thing to keep in mind when using a bobber, you don't have to let it go all the way under. A lot of times when you let it go all the way under, the fish has it in its mouth way too far. I like, as soon as I see mine twitch, I set the hook. And here's one of the benefits. The hook is barely in its mouth, right there on the side. This is a little, little bluegill. I want to release it unharmed. There it goes. One thing to keep in mind, folks, when using bobbers, you don't have to let them go all the way underneath the water. Sometimes if the bobber twitches, that's good enough, set the hook. Perfect example, right in the corner of the mouth. If you let it go too far under, could have them way deep inside, not big enough to keep, there's a dead fish. So, bobber twitches, set the hook, don't wait for it to go all the way under. <laughs> it's about 30 seconds from the last one. Again, like you just saw, the bobber's twitching, I set the hook. Okay, forceps, having the right tools is always essential, especially with pan fishing, we showed you before. Just get in there, Grab a hold of that hook, twist it, and there it is, it's free, okay? Beautiful fish, beautiful fish, beautiful colors. Yeah, that bobber barely hit the water and bam! He nailed it, just creamed it. Ah, not bad, not bad, little bluegill. Actually, uh, you know what? Gonna taste darn good in the frying pan. We're gonna add them to the others in the live well. There we go. Just bobbed it. There is a nicer one. That is gonna that is gonna be nice to the pile we got going already. There is a nice size bluegill. Picked up a little vegetation on the way. Phew. Bigger than hand, look at that, bigger than hand size. That is a nice size bluegill. There he goes. There he goes. Let's see. Come on, there. Barely set the hook. 
Yeah. All right. That is a <laughs> that is a nice size bluegill. Look at that. That is longer than my hand, bigger than my hand. That is a beautiful bluegill. You know what? We got a mess of them already in the live well like this. Beautiful panfish Travis and I have been catching. 